What is a feature on the Helix that maybe you didn't realize was there? Maybe you did, but you didn't realize that it could actually maybe be more useful than you at first thought. Well, this is a topic that I have done a video about in the past, but not in the same way as I'm doing this video. This feature has been updated as of firmware 3.15, and I did discuss it very briefly in a hidden gems feature that I did about the new firmware, but I really didn't go into how it sounds or how we could use it. So today I wanted to do that. And you might ask, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the ability to turn the guitar input pad on and off, not just in global settings anymore, but per preset. Now you might ask, what is the guitar input pad even there for? And a lot of folks don't realize what it's there for. I did do an in-depth video about this before, but just to recap that here, the guitar input pad is really there for the purpose of, if we're maybe using a guitar with very high output pickups, and it could be overloading the input stage of the Helix, it's there so we could turn that guitar input pad on and it's going to not overload those inputs anymore. It's going to basically reduce the amount of signal that's hitting the front of the Helix. So that's fine. Um, a lot of folks might go, well, I don't have any guitars with high output pickup, so I don't need that. But there has been a lot of discussion that I've seen on internet forums, and I've been asked a lot, should I have this turned on or off? And well, the answer really is going to be, well, if we have high output pickups that are overloading the input, then you need to turn it on. That's fine. But what about for those folks who just want to know whether they should have it on or off when they don't have that problem of high output pickups? How does it affect the tone? Does it affect the tone? Should we have it on? Should we have it off? Well, what you're going to find, I'm going to show in this video, is that we can actually alter the tone by using this, obviously, because just like putting a boost in front of a, a tube guitar amp model is going to change the amount of breakup distortion characteristics we get from that amp, so will using the guitar input pad. If we turn it on, we're going to be hitting the front of that amp or any other non-linear effect with more or less signal depending on whether we have it on or off. So that is going to change how those non-linear blocks such as amps and compressors are going to react. So the question again is, do I turn it on or off? Well, that's gonna really depend on us, but I think if we go into it understanding what it does to the signal, then we can make an informed decision as to whether we want it on or off. And I'm also going to give you one little trick later in the video that maybe you didn't think of in how we can use this and potentially even, I don't know, save a block in the Helix. Let's take a look at it. So here we are over in HX Edit, and I just have a very simple little preset set up here with the Matchstick Channel 2 amp, a real favorite of mine. I have it come up with just the stock default settings it pops up with. The default cab it comes up with, the 160 ribbon mic with these settings. And I just added a touch of dynamic room reverb after, just so the sound isn't so dry. So playing this tone with my Vigier Expert Strasdahl guitar, we get this. <laughs> Really nice tone, I really love that amp model. Now, you might ask, where do we find this new control for the guitar input pad setting? Well, if we go to our input block here, what we will notice is it has guitar pad. And we have the setting global, which would mean that, like before, we can set the global setting of that so that every preset that we have will follow whatever we have the setting on in global. If we have it turned on in the global settings, then every preset's gonna have it on as long as they are set to this global setting on the guitar input block. But that's not what we wanna talk about. That's the way it used to be. So here I'm going to just turn it on. So we say, well, how does it sound with it on? So now you're gonna hear the sound of this same preset with the guitar input pad on. Now let's turn it off. When we turn it off, you will hear a boost in the volume slightly, but do you also notice the different breakup distortion characteristics of the amp. Here, the amp is actually breaking up more. Mm -hmm. 
it's quite a substantial amount of breakup more so than if we have the guitar input pad turned on because we are hitting the front of that amp with less signal therefore it is not breaking up as much we could also think about it if we had a compressor after it as well the compressor is not going to work as hard we're going to get less gain reduction from it so any non-linear block that we're sending this signal into is going to act in a different way depending on how much input signal we send into it. So we can see that this could be not only a tool for those folks who maybe have a very high output guitar that they're overloading the signal. This could also be a tool for tone shaping. So how could we use this? Well, we could make a decision just using our ears that we really like the sound of our tones better when the guitar input pad is on and and that's fine I've, I've heard a lot of people say this i don't really personally think it does anything like smooth the sound out or make it necessarily better uh, that's going to be a very subjective thing to say some folks do say that they think it it changes the high end of the tone and smooths it out a bit and i don't really know if i agree with that uh simply because it's a hard thing to actually compare simply because we are actually getting this volume drop when we turn it on, which could just be fooling us into thinking that we're hearing something different as well as we're probably gonna get less overdrive and breakup. So yeah, it might sound like it smooths it out, but it might just be the fact that we are turning the volume down going into the amp, which is changing the tone. Very similar to if we just turn the guitar volume down on our guitar. So I don't know if it really has an effect on the actual tone of the Helix, more so than just changing the behavior of some of those non-linear effects that we're sending it into. But how could we use this? Well, if we decide to have it turned on, that's fine. If we decide to have it turned off, that's fine as well. But what if we use it like this? One thing that a lot of folks may not realize is we can assign this to snapshots. You'll notice I have that. I have two snapshots here. I have number one says on. So I'm gonna set that to on. And then number two, I ha have labeled as off and I have it set to off. So as I switch snapshots here on my foot switch, you'll notice that I'm moving from off to on. So snapshot one is with it on. And if I had that as my main preset, dialed in however much gain I wanted from my block here, maybe I want more. What's gonna happen is if I turn that off with my second snapshot, I'm going to get what would amount to a clean boost in front of the amp that's just gonna drive the amp a little bit harder and give us maybe a little slight volume boost. Maybe something we could do for solos and not have to actually put any other blocks in front of our amp. Maybe something very useful for HX stomp owners. Let's hear how this sounds. So I have it turned on and as I'm playing, I'm going to hit that second snapshot which will turn it off. <laughs> It could even mean more noticeable if I go back to like the lower setting I started with. I believe this is around 2.5. Let's see how it works with this. So here it is with the guitar input pad on. Obviously, it's going to be a subtle difference and we don't have any control over by how much harder we're hitting the front end. We just go with what we're given with the guitar pad. But if we didn't realize that we could control that with a snapshot, we may have been missing a feature that might actually save us a block and give us just that little boost that maybe we were looking for. The outcome of what it's going to sound like is going to be dependent on the amp you're using, how much saturation is already on the amp. So it'll have to be a bit of a trial and error thing to see if it's something that works for us. But I thought it would be a cool thing to point out for some folks that didn't realize that that feature was there and that we have the ability to actually within the same preset control it via snapshots. All right, what did you guys think? I know 
a lot of you knew that feature was there, and it is something that I've spoken about before in videos, but I thought I would talk a little bit more about it, give some sound examples, and throw out that idea that we can control this with snapshots, and hopefully that's something that can be of use to you. Maybe it is not of use to some of you, and that's fine too, but I thought I would throw it out there just in case it was something that some folks didn't realize was there. So thank you so much for watching the video. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some enjoyment or use out of watching it, and also please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.